What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode of The Grounds Crew. I'm your host, Josh Gers, along with my co-host. Bill Rom. What's up, guys? So, first off, big announcement for you guys. If you didn't already see it, Baseball Lifestyle 101 hit 600,000 followers on Instagram. And to celebrate, we are doing a giveaway for an Xbox Series X and MLB The Show 21. So, if you haven't entered that, go check it out. It's awesome. Uh, the winner's going to be announced on May 3rd, so make sure you go hop in and uh, and enter your giveaway. And it's not like we could just go and buy an Xbox Series X. No, nah, you got to... You, you gotta, gotta get that thing. You gotta go to the secondary market. Yeah, yeah. And sacrifice a lamb at the altar to get one. Yep. So I hope you guys enjoy. We yep. appreciate you. Hope you appreciate the giveaway. Get your entries in. Get them in. Fast as you can. As fast as you can. As many as you can. Um, let's jump right into it. The biggest storyline last week, um, it was everywhere, and and I loved it. I think it was so good for the game. Is Padres versus Dodgers, their second series of the year. <clears throat> it was a bloodbath, and and it was awesome. Yeah. Eyes, one eye out, one eye open. This is what I might do the rest of the yep. – I don't it. need two. You don't need two. You just need one. So uh, <laughs> what we're talking about, if you guys are just listening, is Fernando Tatis going yard off Trevor Bauer twice. And and previous game he went yard t- uh, twice off Kershaw. But the big story was Bauer because early in the season uh, – early in spring training, I should say – Bauer was uh, was having some fun and was pitching with one eye open, and that that aggravated some people to say the least. Um, and one of those people definitely being Fernando Tatis. And uh, after he went yard off him, he's he's trotting around the bases doing his thing, um, and he's he's looking back at his dugout, covering one eye, you know, making sure Bauer knows. And I know for a fact Bauer saw it, um, and it it went super viral because not only is Trevor Bauer the villain of the league right now, but People love when he's uh, when he's failing and when t- uh, Fernando Tatis is succeeding. And Fernando Tatis in that series had five bombs, eight hits, and in, in four games. Um, I think he had 13 or 14 RBI, something like crazy like that. Um, and I love to see it. I think it's phenomenal for the game. I, I love that there's a, a strong rivalry there. I think that's what we were anticipating going into the season. Um, and the fact that it's already been so heated is is phenomenal. And and then, like looking at it in, in general though, uh, Bauer's been real good to start the year. Yeah, for he, sure. He's currently sitting at a two five three ERA. Uh, San Diego taking three out of four is big for them from a confidence standpoint. Mm-hmm. Hey, we can hang with the big bad. Yep. Uh, and we're 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 there to compete. Uh, again, it's going to be a lot of good storylines this year. But Bauer so far looks good. Uh, I am curious how he's going to look as the season progresses uh, because I feel like, again, in a vacuum, anybody looks good. It's how do you get there mm-hmm. and how do you survive. Uh, but I'm excited for baseball to just be fun and have good good stuff. And the MLB being cool with a dude running around the bases covering his eye and nobody's getting thrown at, nobody's getting pitched at. Yep. Like the league isn't like reprimanding guys and – no, they're letting everybody have fun mm-hmm. and chirp a little bit, which is what the MLB needed. And we're excited that they listened to the podcast and they took what we said. You know, there you and go. Ran with it. Exactly. <laughs> and and what I thought was really good too um, was Bauer post game being very humble about it and saying like, "Yo, listen, if if I'm gonna showboat, hitters can showboat too." And he, he was like, "Listen, that that happened. Tatis, you know, showed me up, and I'm cool with it because I want that to be part of the game because that allows me to keep doing it too." Um, and I think that's great. I think that people are going to keep picking up on that and adding to, to the But then fun came at him is. on Twitter. For sure. But you know what? Listen, that adds a whole other element of, of you know, the social media chirps. And, like, that's fine, honestly. Cause Called himself his daddy. Like, hold, hold, hold up. Yeah. Hold up. Yep. He po- <laughs> Tatis posted this meme. I'll, I'll put it up on the on the screen, uh, on, on the video. T.O. Yeah. Um, he uh, he's holding the uh, baby, and somebody edited Trevor Bauer's face onto the baby's face, and it was absolutely phenomenal. Um, it, it, just, it was just so, so many good elements. All the things that you like to see that other sports also have, the jawing, the the chirping, the the all the different elements to it, and then also taking it to social media. You always see NBA guys chirping each other in the comment section and, and stuff like that, and I think it's exactly what baseball needs. And we talked about it last episode. Everything's trending in the right direction for baseball right now, and I love it. Couldn't be happier. Absolutely. Um. Also, what's going on in the league right now, and I think it's it's something definitely got to keep an eye on is not not so much the NL MVP, but the AL MVPs and and Rookie of the Years are definitely going to be a big conversation and a big element to watch. Byron Buxton right now, who I don't think anyone really expected to be doing this. He's always been a, a big talent, but never I don't really think hit his his true potential. And I feel like this is what everyone thought he could be doing. Right now, he's batting four thirty eight. 
with 28 hits, 8 bombs, 14 RBIs, and an OPS of just over 1,400. Yeah, um, I mean, he's he's got a, a the, the 2.1 war already mm-hmm. uh, is pretty intense, considering that looking at the exact same situation, the, the stats that you have pulled up here, mm-hmm. Trout's only at a 1-2. Yep. You know, so you guys are both center fielders. You guys are are both in the same spot, and and he's been doubly as good, um, and and that's that's beyond the underlying because if we we look at the underlying, Trout's been amazing. Yeah. Uh, and he's been everything that we said. Hey, I want to see him be able to do, and mm-hmm. and how he's going to do it. Uh, but yeah, I mean Buxton being a surprise, we talk about it like, but what do you think is one of the reasons why a guy to age twenty seven all of a sudden turns it around like this. Uh, Do you think this is just a a surprise? Do you think this is just a temporary thing? Or do you think that he's going to be able to sustain this? Obviously, I hope he does. Um, I think it's a combination of a few things. I I think in his previous years, um, he's had a lot of, like, good elements, but they've never all aligned into, like, a phenomenal season. Um, And I think this is kind of – I don't know what he did in the offseason or what he's changing uh, from his perspective, obviously, but I think he's doing all of the right things that that he knows can make him the great player that he was supposed to be. Yeah. Because, um, like I said, I think he was a little bit of a letdown earlier in his career. Um, like, you knew the speed was there, you knew the defense was there, and you knew he had pop, but I think really he's, he's putting it all together. His at-bats have just been great. Um, his defense, unbelievable. Like, he could easily be a gold glove candidate also, like, Everything is is going in the right direction for him. I think he's he's tops and not tops and stolen bases yet, um, but he's everything else has been phenomenal. I mean, his like. slugging percentage is currently nine thirty eight. We know that that's not going to be necessarily sustainable. Yeah. But one of the things, just taking a quick peek at some of his numbers, looking back, mm-hmm. uh, so his OPS has risen every year. Uh, last year was actually his best OPS ever. Uh, he had an eight forty four the year before that, eight twenty seven. Uh, 728, 714, 576. Yeah. Uh, so looking at him in that regard, uh, it looks like one, injuries. He's never played more than, uh, yes, than 140 games. Yep. Uh, so, like, the, the talent, just all his numbers are in isolation of not being able to play. Uh, listen, it's the Justin Turner syndrome. Mm-hmm. And we've talked about this on the on the podcast in the past, like, Justin Turner wasn't allowed to shine until later in his career. And no matter when you make it to the show, I feel like you're going to struggle to some degree. Mm -hmm. So you just kind of need to be given, you know, three, four years to just, hey, I'm going to find where I'm at. Right. I'm going to find who I am. There's going to be ups and downs and good and bad. And it's why the averages matter. But the averages don't matter if you don't have enough volume to go. Mm -hmm. You know, in statistics classes, I think the number in some capacity before something becomes statistically relevant is about 1,600. Okay. So if 1,600 is the number of exposures before we start to normalize and we have a good estimate of what's happening, Mm -hmm. and that's what whenever you hear polling places predicting the the results of something, they're using based off of how many, and at some point in time it normalizes, and they're like, with with accuracy we can assume Mm -hmm. that this is the case if there's a wide enough spread and enough numbers in. Right. Uh, So you look at a guy and you say, if a guy only gets 400 at-bats a year, Right to get to that, he needs four seasons. Yep. So you're not gonna see who he is to, for four years, and then he's gonna kind of find it. But then expe- we're not just a static organism that didn't get better. Mm-hmm. Those at bats and those things add up, and you see a guy like this. And we, as Mets fans, how's JD Davis doing? He's, he's getting better. Bat, bat looks solid again. Yeah. Just given opportunity, given exposure. Justin yep. Turner, the Daniel Murphys of the world. Yep. Now you see a situation like this. Your boy who is struggling with health right now, Luke Voigt, like. Mm-hmm. Enough at bats, enough time, and just given the opportunity to play. Uh, so I'm excited to see if there's more like this. Yeah. I think COVID is less of a thing now. Mm-hmm. We don't. We're not seeing as many guys missing time due to COVID. Yeah. Exposure. Anybody who's really missing now is just because they got vaccinated. Or so like, I so. feel like now we're gonna start seeing more rhythm. Yes. A- and with that, I-, I am excited to see the next person. But Buxton's got to be in that conversation. Trout's mm-hmm. in that conversation. But one guy you didn't put here, and I don't understand why he's not. Shohei Otani. No, you're right. So, Shohei Otani, again, we've talked about it. If you guys are fans of the show, you know we were first on <laughs> Shohei Otani. By a wide margin, first pitcher in 100 years, obviously, to lead the league in home runs and start a game. And start a game, yeah. Uh, he's currently got 
Uh, he's batting 284, seven bombs, 18 RBIs, uh, and OPS of 959. What's the pitching numbers? I'm getting to it. Pitch, pitching is – and, guys, like on this on this show, we've said multiple times, the biggest reason why I think that he's so valuable mm-hmm. is the pitching. And he continues to shove and he continues to, to have crazy velocities. But I, I was listening to an interview with him the other day, and one of the things that he said was, uh, right now out of 100, I give my control a five. That's that's a good uh, good number. Great number because yeah. he walked a ton of people. Yeah. But, like, his self-awareness that he's a five mm-hmm. and, like, 100 still exists. Like I would say 100 is, like, DeGrom on his best day of, like, what, what does 100th accuracy look like? So De- DeGrom last night pitched, and he looked meh, yeah. right, for himself. Yep. Six innings, nine strikeouts, one earned run. Yep. But he was meh. He yep. was having trouble with location and all this other stuff. Mm-hmm. But he's in the zone, and his yep. stuff is good. And he's got the velo, and he's got the differentials, and he goes up, down, and he just knows how to pitch. Mm-hmm. I would say last night I would tell you DeGrom looked like he was a 75. Yep. So my point is, is if we even get Otani at a 75, his splitter is disgusting. Yeah. Absolutely. Like, if he gets to a 75 where he's throwing the splitter for strikes, mm-hmm. he's he's a stud. So It's really his fastball command. If he can establish in the zone for, like, the majority of yeah. his starts, then that makes everything else. Because he already has plus-plus slider, splitter um, stuff. And then if he can establish that fastball early and then just start mixing that stuff in, he's going to have more Ks, less walks, and just be overall way more dominant. Uh, because I think that's the thing, too. He's getting more walks, which means he has to pitch in the stretch more. He has more high stress yep. at bats that he may not necessarily have needed to have. He could have gotten somebody out with on the on the fourth pitch of the at-bat instead of taking them all the way to a walk. Um, so that's definitely something to, to think about for him as well, uh, just the amount of stress he has to deal with um, while he's pitching. I, but one of the things that, again, the, the, they were talking about was by kind of allowing him to do both without having restrictions, mm-hmm. he's funny, he's making jokes – like he looks like he's relaxing more, mm-hmm. but then what? What everybody's also starting to find out is he's ultra competitive. Yep. Like he wants to win worse than anybody, but he's also like super fast. Mm-hmm. He is so fast on the base paths. Yep. And like, I really, like he's a he he. The more and more we've dove in on this, and everybody's now watching, and because he's doing well, there's more focus point on him. He's such a freak. Yeah, like I've never he has seen top ten somebody. speed in the league. You so this is the thing. You have <laughs> top ten speed, power, and top ten arm, all in the same human being. Like, yeah, like, that's a that's a specimen. It's so cool watching this, mm-hmm. and I hope it even gets like he finds rhythm with the pitching. Yeah, because hitting right now, he looks like the guy he he had been his first year. Mm-hmm. Now, matching. if he just gets Absolute enough matching. at bats, he'll be a thirty plus home two eighty five batting average, thirty plus home runs. He'll be out there, but the pitching is where I just. What's it gonna be? And if the pitching is 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 what he's shown in flashes, mm-hmm. if he can find fifty percent control, he's gonna be top ten in the league at strikeouts. Yeah, and, that's and if, he, just, if he keeps his ERA around where it is right now, like a three three, that's a that's a great option. I, that's a, I, again, that's phenomenal. Uh, I think he'll get better than the three three if he thinks he's been at zero and his best start was five. Yeah, like that. The first inning of the game, he got hit for. Four earned runs, yep. and then retired the next uh, twelve of thirteen batters, and he had f- I think five guys got struck out in a row. Yes, that's right. He's like at that point in time, I feel like I found like forty percent. Like nah, he's different. People, yep, he's different, and and I, I again look forward. But uh, a a guy that you mentioned a lot even before, and we've had him, we talked about him on the show. Mm-hmm. Uh, your rookie of the year candidate. Talk about him. Yeah, we've talked about him earlier on in the show, um, and I think he was a huge question mark. Then it was it was early. It was like the second week of the season, and he was having a great start. And was like, all right, cool. Can he keep this up? Your mean Mercedes, currently batting four twenty, uh, twenty nine hits, sixteen runs, six home runs, fourteen RBIs, uh, thirteen hundred OPS. Ridiculous. And, and honestly, I think his at-bats are giving me, I don't want to say trout vibes, but definitely in the in the highest caliber of, of Well, hitters. so right now, his, right his, his OPS plus, he's better than trout. Yep. Uh, his OPS period and a sentence is better. His slugging percentage better. The only person, the, like, 
Buxton is out hitting him. Yeah. Uh, but again, M- Mercedes is young. Like this is something that, like, this guy is showing it. And we don't know what he is. Right. Is this sustainable? Is he the next era of guys? Well, is, here's is, here's what I find interesting about his at bats is that he's not a one dimensional hitter. Like. You'll say to a guy like this, like let's say he carries this out and bats 350 at the end of the season and has yep. this crazy season. The next season you ask the question, okay, our pitcher's going to figure out how to get him out. Yep. Well, I think he's already faced some pretty good arms, and hit, the way he's hitting and the hits he's getting, they're very diverse. He can inside-out yep. pitches. He can hit sliders, fastballs, curveballs, change-ups, whatever. Um, and he, he has some serious pop on all of those pitches too. So the, it begs the question, like, what, what are people going to start doing to try and get him out? Like he he has the, those at bats where it just like it doesn't seem like he's ever out of the at bat and he he can do what, whatever in any count. And I and I feel like also for for hitters, any hitter who gets a hot start, I feel like is going to have a hot year mm-hmm. because pitchers this year I feel like are going to fade mm-hmm. back half. Okay. Because a lot the, the, everybody had so few innings last year, so they're coming out really hot. And you think so gonna so I think juice. the pitchers are ahead because mm-hmm. it's easier to stay. It's easier to stay yourself as a pitcher. Yep. By only having ten starts in a year, mm-hmm. right? Because then you can do bullpens. Everybody's tracking your your this, your that. The difficulty with a a hitter is you're reacting to what the pitcher does, right? Yep. A pitcher gets to choose what they do, so it's easier for them to impose their will mm-hmm. and to attack things and have a game plan to go. The hitter really has to react to the real time changes that are happening there. Yep. Uh, to a much d- greater degree, so those guys, I, the hitters, I feel like are behind tremendously mm-hmm. from having a lack of exposure to innings last year. Uh, pitchers are well ahead. So the other thing that's going to happen is these guys' arms are going to wear down mm-hmm. as the year goes on, and they have to actually make enough, like more starts. Yep. Um, and we're not just playing this limited schedule where it's like you know, hey, we're going to get ten starts and. That's it. You're going to have three times the amount of starts for guys. I don't think the pitcher's going to ha- hold up. Mm-hmm. So if a guy can weather right now, if you can do well right now, while all the pitchers are so far ahead, when they start to fatigue, who's going to tee off? Yeah. You know, and, and that's why I think a guy, uh, this is this is a, a great start considering all of the other people who are struggling with the bat, mm-hmm. i.e. the Mets who look like an absolute, absolute travesty. Yep. Offensively, it's, it's right ugly. Now. It's ugly, and they were supposed to be, uh, you know, up there with the Padres, Dodgers, with with that kind of offense. Offense, and they are lacking sorely. But what, what pitching I, staff's been amazing. Pitching staff's amazing, and like you were saying, like if there's fatigue, the Mets have depth. We got two. Oh, yeah. We got two number two starters coming back. Coming soon. back, so we'll be fine there. The Mets need to score like three runs a game, and we should be good. But is, we're not doing that. Is Taiwan Walker the comeback player of the year? Dude, right he now? looks so good right now. Like. I would lo- I I'm for it because he looks ridiculous, and I I think he was definitely a question mark when they brought him over. Like we knew how he had some talent, but it was it was a little unclear as to what we were gonna get. But we're getting a stud. I, I don't know what his ERA <laughs> is right now, but I mean two one four ERA two one four nasty. That's two, ridiculous. Two one four ERA. He's got four starts. He's one and one because the offense is an absolute abomination. Yep. Uh, 21 innings pitch, 23 strikeouts. The one thing I think that he is getting a little lucky with Mm -hmm. and I don't think is sustainable over time. So now his FIP is still a 304. Okay. So he is pitching close Mm -hmm. to what they're saying, what what, what it's looking like. Right. His whip is similar to last year. His hits per nine are down. His strikeouts are slightly up. But his walks, he's currently walking six per nine. Mm-hmm. And that's not sustainable across the season. Yeah, I think he's he's he is walking people and getting some like lucky plays behind. Uh huh. Yep. And that's where I think like he I love the numbers, right? The mm-hmm. the on the on the surface level. Yep. He keeps walking six guys per nine innings. He's gonna struggle. He I think looking at it before he's got uh he's got somewhere in the ballpark of fourteen walks. Okay. Yeah. I think he had uh, his, yeah, he's his got blow four, up game was bad against the Cubs. He's got yeah, fourteen like, walks on the season, and in in twenty one innings pitched. Yeah, that's not great. But it, it's like a Otani situation. If he figures it out and 
you know, brings that down a little <clears> bit more and then continues to be the doing all the successful things he has, I think he'll be fine. But then that also begs the question, and I think there is a very obvious answer, when Syndergaard comes back, when Carrasco comes back, which one of these match pitchers is going to the bullpen? And I have my pick already. I would say it's going to be Peterson. You think Peterson goes to the... As much as I... I, I think a, the baseball purists will be like, but you need a lefty in your rotation. I don't know if you really do now. Well, with how much everybody goes to the bullpen in, in general, like the Mets did it last night, and I'm talking about the Mets taking out DeGrom too early, mm-hmm. and they bring in Luke because he's immediately facing a lefty. Yeah. And, they, and and he has that start off, like, let's go, let's chase it down. When you're going that in the seventh inning – you're putting in a lefty for a lefty on lefty situation already. Yep. When it finally gets to the point that it really even matters, you're going to your bullpen. Exactly. And you have guys who are doing that. So I don't feel you need to. Yeah, Peterson's been been a struggle bus mm-hmm. so far. I just don't know if he's pitched enough innings for me to really give an earnest idea that I think he's going to go. He definitely has to pick up uh, how well he's doing or he's going to – clearly need to be replaced yeah uh but looking at his last his last few i mean his last start he not bad six yeah. innings pitch two earned runs uh really he's got two bad starts mm-hmm. and he's got two real good starts yeah so six innings pitch under two runs i each. agree that you, i wouldn't hate to see a little more sample size but that question is definitely going to be posed sooner rather than later i know carrasco's pretty close to coming back. Syndergaard, I think we're getting early June, possibly. Um, so it's going to it's gonna be soon. Um, and he'll could probably go into a long relief role, maybe a, a sixth starter when, like you said, there's could be yeah. questions of um, pitchers kind of burning out. They want to save on, yeah. especially if the Mets could be in playoff contention. Um, so I don't, he's definitely not going to go away. Um, but we'll see. I, I think he's... He is the easiest person his, to move right but now. But I don't for look me. at his stuff as like so overpowering and dominant mm-hmm. that like a move to the bullpen is like a high leverage move. Yeah, no, I, I don't disagree with you. And, it's just and, like he's, where and you he's got enough, him. and he's got enough mix of pitches mm-hmm. that he 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 he's Stephen Matz. Yeah, he's he, Stephen Matz. I mean, honestly, he's Stephen Matz threw harder too. So like that, if yeah. Matz went to the bullpen, I, I would have been even more comfortable with that as yeah. an option. But yes, I don't. I don't disagree with you. His stuff isn't crazy. He hits ninety to ninety-two. He has good off speed, but I don't know if like he'll even thrive in the bullpen. So. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see there. Um, but speaking of that, the division. Yeah. Right. The the division currently no team is above five hundred in the NL East. Correct. In the NL East. Yep. And the worst team is nine and twelve, and it's the Nationals, mm-hmm. which I don't foresee that staying that way. No, I don't think so either. Uh that's just a nightmare division. Yep. But looking at every division, if I had told you at this point in time in the season you have to pick who's going to be leading the division, yep. what would have been your success rate? Let me see here. Probably pretty low, honestly. Go, go division by – did right, you I'm think – I'm going to do the NL. I'll start the NL. No, no, start, start at the top. Start at the top. Do you think that the Red Sox – I, I would never pick the Red Sox. I would have told you Blue Jays or Yankees. For and sure, they're not. Blue Jays are third in the division. Yankees are fourth at eleven and twelve and eleven thirteen. Um, AL Central, I would have told you the White Sox without a doubt. Now it's the Royals, fifteen and eight. Um, the Royals look fantastic. Fantastic, I, I didn't love it. See this. I I, re- I remember talking. We might have actually talked about it on the show that the Royals could be something because they did make some pieces. They had some stuff that could make them a good team. But we but didn't, I didn't know think what they this were going to get. Yes, so no, far. they look they look they look well great. beyond what we expected. So good. Um, the AL West. What's the, what's the Indians' actual record right Indian, now? The Indians are eleven and twelve. So we talked about the Indians as a key piece. I think the, the the Lindor trade for them has obviously worked out immensely at this point. Yep. Because they even even the worst piece in the trade is outplaying Lindor at this point. Probably yes. Um, <laughs> so uh, they, they they're winning in that regard, but. Um, even beyond that, they did a really, really nice job of, of getting a few players in mm-hmm. to do stuff. And no, actually, uh, Jimenez is bat 192, so ah, he, he's somewhere. It's not that much worse than he, Lindor. He, he's, <laughs> I, again, they, they, at least it's a wash for a, yep. lot, a lot cheaper. Yep. Um, but uh, then on top of that, Carrasco got hurt. So Carrasco's in that situation where he's missing. Being Them being around 500, like, they did a great job. The trade yep. ended up working out for them because they're yep. going to be able to be okay. 
Yep. And they I got a, Tristan McKenzie looks good. Tristan looks great. Yep. He's been killing it. They, they, they've got the Biebs. Like, th- they're going to be okay. Mm-hmm. So, again, I, I think they, they'll they be in contention, and they, maybe they reload their roster at some point in time. Yeah. Maybe they say, hey, we, we, we shredded. We got stuff down. We're mm-hmm. good enough. Is there a player we could pick up to replace one of our big holes later in the yeah. year? You, you know, know who who's in, I could see being an interesting trade piece for them? They have a <clears throat> plethora of gold glove catchers right now. Yeah. They have um, Hedges and um, – Oh my God, I'm blanking on his name right now, but he's their starter, uh, Paris, and like they could easily move one of those guys and get a, a nice piece for in return. Um, so we'll definitely see there. I could see I could see them getting hot late in the season yeah. and making a run at the division. Well, especially sure. if their young guys catch fire. Yep. Yeah. There's, there's definitely a lot of potential there. If their young guys catch fire. They're sitting around this now. They'll, they, they look like a team that's going to be able to make a jump. Yes. That that division I just don't think is even remotely close to settled. No, not at all. Not at all. Um, and the AL West, as I think everyone really expected, it, is neck and neck through and through. Yeah. Mariners look solid. Angels look good. Astros, Athletics at the top right now. Um, I think. What's I, the worst record in the division? Ten and fifteen. The and Rangers. What, what's what's just above that? Thirteen and twelve with the Mariners. So they're actually that division is outplayed and been more difficult than the NL East. Yeah. You yep. Know? Yep. But like then at least just I feel a bunch of the teams didn't get to play games. Yeah, they're so behind in volume of games thus far. Yeah, how many how many games are the Mets short on? The Mets are I think are at nineteen total games so far. Mets Mets are at nineteen. Yeah, everybody else paid like twenty four, twenty five. So like yeah. there's six games behind. That's two series worth of games yep. that they're behind statistically at numbers and. I, I, and just that, experience. Yeah, like, that, the that's guys gonna. Are six that's where I think that we'll, bats. we'll find some normalization of some of these things. Yep. Keep it keep it rolling. All right, so we're, let's talk. Let's keep talking at all least here. Okay. Um, I think as we expected, it was going to be difficult. Yeah. Pitching looks good. Um, I think we talked about it at the begin at before the season started. Whoever is going to come out of this division is probably not going to have the record that everyone was predicting. Yeah. Because of the difficulty. Bloodbath. Yeah, it's it's ridiculous. Trading wins back and forth. Yep. Well, and the other thing is we always talk about Atlanta is built for a regular season. They're not necessarily built for the playoffs. Yep. But the th- situation with Atlanta is um, Acuna's been a monster. Ridiculous. I yes. got this right this time, guys. I didn't. Yes. Mi- I didn't. It's mix not so- Soto. It is Acuna. I didn't, I didn't he's mix going up crazy. Acuna and Soto. He's going stupid. Um, yeah, I mean, he's he's been absolutely fantastic so far. I think he's got something in the ballpark like a twelve fifty OPS. Um, he he's he's come out of the gate with hi. I'm one of the top five hitters in the league. Yeah, crazy. He's been three fifty eight home runs, which is tied for the lead. Uh, twelve hundred OPS. Got nuts. that right, Deets. Absolutely nuts. And yeah, he's all he's and, been all over the field but, too. But so plays, that's my like, thing is that when you have a when your team is twelve and twelve, mm-hmm. and you have someone absolutely killing it, I I always look at that and I go, something's gonna get the, the, the wheels gonna fall there. off on that. Yep. Like if you have only if your whole thing is being you're you're a mediocre team held together by one person with an MVP type season, mm-hmm. what happens when that person comes down to the average? Yep. You know, it's, he also has been hurt a couple times too. Yeah, so like. It, that, that that to me scares me in terms of them in terms like do are is this sustainable where are they going to be mm-hmm. but nobody has looked great in that division yeah it looks like everybody's kind of just you know brawling mm-hmm. and nobody's boxing yet yep you know nobody's actually trying to to lay somebody out yeah uh moving on to the nl central the brewers i love that <clears throat> team they're they're so good right now and i don't think anybody really expected to be like how dominant they're being right now, but their pitching's been phenomenal. Offense looks really good. Um, you know who kind of kind of shocking me a little bit Pirates? is the Pirates. Yeah, twelve yeah. and twelve. For I, sure. I thought they were going to be just a dumpster fire, to be yeah. honest with you. And they they look pretty decent. I, but this, I, the team that also surprises us in that division, I think the the Cubs have been looking to clear stuff. Yeah. The whole Chris Bryant move at some point in time, like mm-hmm. they 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 the the first few games for them were terrible for yep. sure. Their offense is finding it though. They they found 10, it against the Mets for but sure. Last ten, they're four and six. Yeah, it's not. The, uh, yeah, I don't know. So again, I gotta look at I gotta look at recent yeah. history to yep. some degree too. Yep. The Reds are in a spiral. They're two and eight mm-hmm. in their last ten. Like yeah, they started. And then they're eleven and thirteen. So yep. like, there there's room to go. But yep. What 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 about the the Giants? Seven and three in the last in ten. General. 16 in and nine. Yep. 
Like Giants the, are shocking the world right now. The Padres have been underwhelming, and and you know beating up on the Dodgers saved them their season pretty much right there. Yeah, like you can't say that a se- a game this early in the season is that that big. Mm-hmm. But if they had lost three out of four instead of winning yep. three out of four, you'd be sitting in a situation where the Dodgers are and the Giants are are strong in the division. The the Dodgers would have close to twenty wins already on the year, mm-hmm. and Padres would be sitting under five hundred if they hadn't hadn't pulled this off. Yep. So like doing that saved a lot of the season. Mm-hmm. Diamondbacks strange twelve and twelve team. The Rockies, I just feel like, man, just nah, they're not. It. That ain't it, Chief. <laughs> Interesting that they're eight and seven at home and one and eight on away. Right, yeah. right, right. Well, I mean, <laughs> but it's not. It's not interesting, right? It's, well, we know exactly we, what we it always is. talk yeah. about. Yeah. Like, there, there's, there's, there's teams oh, was, and stuff that, that oh, always are better at home. Want to talk about that? Because they're built to do it. Um, Red Sox. Yes. Eight and eight at home. Eight and one away. Not sustainable. Not, nope. What won't happen? But it makes but sense. But also, they're, they're eight, have more eight at, at home, home probably won't stay. Yeah. You know, like it's always that 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 kind of what's the caveat there mm. of we we got small sample sizes to deal with right now, but a team like but you can start to gain some insight into teams. Yeah. Right. So like the the um, Royals, the Royals are winning no matter where they are. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. So they're they're eight and five and seven and three. So like you look at that team and you say that's just a good team. Yep. They can play a variety of styles. They can do different things. The Athletics, eight and six, seven and four. Right, that those are teams that are starting to create those. When you have a team like the Brewers, the Brewers are five and seven at home, nine and three away. Mm-hmm. I have to feel like that's going to switch at some point in time with the away record, right? But mm-hmm. is the five and seven at home? Have they gotten lucky on the road? You know, typically yeah. you think you play much better at home. The Giants are absolutely tearing it up at home, ten and three at home. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, o- o- always interesting. The Diamondbacks haven't really even gotten a chance to play at home yet. Yeah. They've only had They've four games. Around. They're three and four. You know? Yep. And that's, again, this strange, the start of the year with the strange COVID situation, what was going on, who was playing when, where were they playing. Like, I feel like there's a lot of still distortion. Mm-hmm. We're just, like I said before, I think we're right now about to hit the groove for the season. People are, a lot of the players in the league even now are vaccinated. Fans are vaccinated. Coaches are vaccinated. You, you're, you're, not seeing the spikes as dramatically. It's yeah, easier for them to isolate. To Games are just going to start rolling, I think. Yep. Um, and if that's the case, we'll, we'll, I think in I think in three weeks, mm-hmm. we'll see who's good. Yes. And if a, if a team gets cold or gets hot in the next three weeks, it could mean the season. Mm-hmm. Because for at sure. that point in time, we're going to get, get into the, the, the heart of the summer and – those good teams are going to carry those momentum, and those bad teams are going to struggle to get out of the hole. Yep. And they'll so. start kind of punting stuff as they approach the trade deadline, stuff like that. Um, what I think is interesting, too, this early, like the, the big matchups already feel like playoff atmosphere. Like yes. Dodgers, like Dodgers Padres, feel like it's a NLCS kind of atmosphere. Every game matters, kind of thing. Yeah. I think even like I would say the Mets, even to some degree, are like putting that on themselves. Like yo, know, like these games are important regardless of. But is that they why are. they suck? It could be honestly, it could be. I think there was a lot of expectations for that. Just team keep going the into game, season. the game, man. Yeah. Like everybody's looking at the back of their card, like I should be better than this. Mm-hmm. And it's like just go play the game. While well, watching it last night, just yeah. Nobody looks like they're they're in any sort of groove at the plate for them. That's why, again, for me, that hitting coach doesn't have much long time in this world because mm-hmm. you got too many good hitters who look absolutely horrible, and they have no plan at the plate. And the yeah. guys are doing well. It's just because their talent is matched up with their luck. And I don't feel like it's because anybody has a true sense of the plan. Because mm-hmm. no, the Red they Sox, the, 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 they didn't they didn't come out last night with the best pitching staff in the world. And no. the Mets could barely accumulate any offense. Yeah, like Nick Nick Pavetta is like a good he's pitcher. Good, yeah, right? but he's and the their relievers are good. Yeah, but like they looked. That's that's the thing. Like I, they I, were I, facing Degrom. Yeah, that that's the key for the Red Sox right now is their their pitching staff is pitching way above what everyone expected, and then their offense is continuing to be what everyone expected that to be a good aspect for them. Um, we'll see where they go. I hope they do well. I mean, I hope they keep it up, but we'll we'll see. Um, I think that's it for today, guys. Yeah, 
We got through what we wanted to get through. Dennis Dietz has some, Dietz. What do you some got, knowledge man? to end the show today, though. Drop well, it. No, I, I want to know what your thoughts are on the Madison Bumgarner no no hitter. Don't care. You don't care if if it should be a no hitter or not. Yeah. Uh, after conversing with people, I thought it could have been called an official just because the game was set for seven innings, but. The, the, those last two innings are the most high pressure and no hitter, so I don't disagree with the thought process. There. Yeah, but but like that's the thing is that not what's the difference between seven and nine? Two, uh, six outs. Cool. Mm-hmm. So my question to you though is, what's actually the difference between seven and nine beyond that? If I tell you that you're like that a, a, a hockey game, right, is two periods, not three, mm-hmm. right? Are you gonna feel stress in the second period? Yeah. If you're losing, right? When you know there's a third, you don't. If I know that it's seven, am I going to feel pressure in the sixth and the seventh? Sure, yeah. I'm getting the same pressure. Now, if it's nine, am I going to feel as much pressure in the sixth and the seventh? I haven't done shit yet. So the pressure is the thing. Yep. The guy knew what the end was, mm-hmm. right? If I set up a situation where I said, here's a, th- I'll give you a, th- Dietz, here's a ball of paper, there's the trash can. I'll give you a hundred bucks if you hit it. Yeah, we can take the lid off of it. (laughs) A hundred bucks if you make it. Okay. Right? You're going to feel the pressure for the hundred dollars. Sure. Right? If I take that there's nothing, he might make it easy. Knowing where the finality is, Mm -hmm. is what creates the thing. Right. Nobody hit a a damn ball in seven innings, and you knew the game was seven innings. Mm -hmm. You got no hit. Sucks to suck. Move on. So do you think it should have been an official? I just don't care. Okay, that's fine. Whichever direction you want to go is fine. But, like, y'all got no hit. Yeah, absolutely. Done. You got dominated. Like you, we, an official record, a thing, a this. Go, guys, a, asterisks away. But we're talking about shit that doesn't matter. Fair enough. I just thought the listeners might want to know. So. No, listen, the I mean, listeners are bored that, by that, that was stuff. The, that was the thing. It was like no one really cared either way. They got, they got buried. It is what it is. You can't do anything about it. I got nothing for you. Yeah. All right, guys, thanks for listening. Make sure you like and subscribe. We appreciate all the support. Toss us a review, and make sure you go enter our 600 gig giveaway on Instagram. Get that Xbox Series X. Yes, sir. Announced on May 3rd. We'll see you next time, guys. Baseball lifestyle. That's my lifestyle.